Alright, good morning, afternoon or evening everyone. Today I'm going to be playing the tier 10 Tech 3 Cruiser Minotaur. It's British of course and here it is. And this is, we're doing this for the How I Play series or the Thought Process videos where I kind of just talk about what I do in the games and maybe it could help you in the future. Maybe if you're, you know, aspiring Minotaur players or something. But yeah, so here's the Minotaur of course. Um, I'm, we're doing the Minotaur first, um, we remember we have taken a, quite a long break with this playlist of course because of my exams but now I'm done so I can actually record these videos because they are pretty long videos. Um, but yeah, so this is the Minotaur, um, you guys voted for this, remember? I put a poll up with five ships as you can see here um, and the Minotaur got highest votes and then we'll do them in order of which gets the highest to lowest, and then we'll try and make a video for each. But anyway, so let's start off with the armor layout. Uh, Minotaur has 16 millimeter nose armor, 16 side and deck armor, and then 16 millimeter ass, sorry, I mean aft armor here. And then we have the 101 millimeter armor belt, which is actually the citadel. If we take all of this off, as you can see, it is the Citadel and it is gigantic, my friends. It is gigantic and easily hittable. So you have to play really carefully when you play the Minotaur because you are highly likely to get citadel But anyway, let's move over to the Commander build here. So I have Last Stand, Incoming Fire Alert, Priority Target, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, Concealment Expert, Adrenaline Rush and RPF. I'm radio location, of course. In terms of equipment, I have main battery mod 3, concealment system mod 1, steering gears mod 1, aiming system mod 1, hydro search mod 1, and main armaments mod 1. And I'm going to be playing it with smoke, because not only do I believe for the average player it's better to play it with the smoke in randoms, um, but honestly it's just easier to play overall, and can be still just as rewarding as the radar, to be honest. So, um, this is the... Well, this is the camo I'm running for the Minotaur, which is the Perma Camo. I don't actually own the Perma Camo, it's bugged. Maybe next patch I'm gonna be able to own it. Um, but um, it's actually the Transformers Camo I'm, I'm owning. I'm just turning it off via the, the cog on the bottom right. You can actually do that, which is really cool. So I'm gonna turn it back off. There you go. There's also the Spaceator, which... Oh, because I have it turned off... Um, there you go, that's a space tour, which looks pretty cool, I guess. But there you go. Um, so yeah, let's move over to our flag, see what we're running. Um, let me turn this off. How do I turn this off? Boom, okay. So signals, these are the flags I'm going to be running. Flags. Um, let's put on a Malta flag, actually. Um, put on a Malta flag. British power, there you go. Alright, so. That's the Minotaur. I think we should go into our first game. Alright, so here we are on the first game on um, Minotaur. Actually, to be honest with you guys, I'm having to re-record this for the first like four minutes of this game because I forgot to hit the record button, but after like the first four minutes, it'll be live commentary, but it is what it is. So here we are in Minotaur, of course. Um, so let's talk about the statistics. Before we do that, let me just turn this on and off so we don't hear turbo spam. So... For the statistics for Minotaur, we have 15.8 kilometer gun range, 2.8 second reload, um, we have 10 kilometer torps, 8 per side, which means we have 16 total torps per side, of course. Um, in terms of the consumables, we have, sorry, we have 16 total torps, not per side, so 8 per side times 2 is 16. Um, we have, of course, um, smoke, hydro, super heal, and the DCP, and we have 6.9 kilometer AA range. Um, the only Minotaur nerf I can remember for a while ago is the AA range. It, it goes from 8.6 to 6.9. Um, you know, so remember back in the day, um, in old RTS carriers, your AA range was 8.6, so it went down to 6.9 because of some changes or whatever. So you have to keep in mind, 8.6 is quite significant. Because when carriers walked into your A range, well, they couldn't see your ship before they stepped into your A range, one. And two, um, you could start, like, basically making a no-fly zone at 8.6 kilometers and below. And it was pretty significant, honestly, because in divisions, for example, they used to call it fishing divisions. 
um, basically what happens is they um, form up two Minotaurs or two Woosters or a Minotaur Wooster division. They split the map in half and the enemy carrier would literally not be able to play the game on that side of the map, which means um, basically your team is guaranteed a win um, if your carrier player is competent with that fishing division. Um, so basically they take midway and double Minotaur, midway double Wooster or, you know, mix and match however you want. And they would just win games guaranteed, which was really annoying, of course, to play against. And, of course, it was pretty weird to play with as well, to be honest. But anyway, um, so let's go towards the sea cap. We see this Groningen here. Um, I'm thinking of um, maybe doing the thing, but he needs to get spotted. We have no way of spotting it, as you know, because we have smoke. Um, why am I running? So here he is, by the way. All right, so why am I running smoke, you might ask? Well, it's because I think Smoke Minotaur and Radar Minotaur should have their own videos because their playstyle is completely different, to be honest, guys. Um, and I think they should have completely different videos. So, um, here we are in the Smoke Minotaur video. If you want a video for Radar Minotaur in the future, I can totally make one. I just wanted to, you know, make them into two separate videos. But yes, so this is going to be Smoke Minotaur. Um... So if we find the Ohio broadside here, let's smoke up and then start shooting him a bit. See how much damage we can do on him. So we're at 10,000 right now. Um, we're going to do some damage, I guess, on him. Let's see, let's see. Okay, pretty decent volleys. Need to aim a bit better, obviously. There's a Zao there too, but he goes dark instantly. Um, so yeah. We do have Hydra running, so... But Groningen doesn't have Torp, so I think we're chilling, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so let's try output as much damage on this Ohio as physically possible right now. I'm kind of thinking of what the next step is after this. If the Ohio goes behind the rock, which is he is, we're actually not going to go to the 10 line, I'm thinking. I think we go B, maybe, because the Shimakaze is there. Maybe we could Hydro him for our DDs or, you know, whatever. We can do something, you know, on the B cap. I don't think we're going to do much here on the C cap. Maybe... Actually, the Zao just got spotted, so we're going to actually just try output as much damage on him as possible. Um, if possible, of course. Oh my... I should have seen this coming, of course. But my brain was turned off. Because, you know, what can I do? My brain isn't fully operational all the time. So let's reverse. And I think I turned the wrong way to reverse because I turned in like this and made the Torp potentially actually hit me here. But I couldn't turn the other way because I'd beach. But I think that was okay, because we took them both on the nose, and might have actually slightly saturated our nose, but we're going to heal it back up. So let's keep reversing here. Oh man, is this Ohio going to come back? No. We might just reverse here and go towards the, 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 the B cap again. So, well, not again, for the first time, of course, we're going to go towards the B cap. I see the Pomeran is pointed towards us, as you can see, he's going to enter our gun range very soon. So we will see... Yeah. And we're going to start going towards the B cap here. Um, so yeah, let's see what we can do. I'm going to shoot this Ohio bit, potentially. Not some damage like this. Zero damage, of course, as expected. But, um, let's go for the Pomeran, maybe. Unload some damage on him, maybe. Oh, there's a Shima here. A Shima here. I think I'm going to let my teammates deal with them without me having to get involved. So, by the way, for those of you wondering, I actually was talking the entire part um, before, but I forgot to click the record button. I actually started recording live right now. But I'm going to have to recommentate the first four or five minutes of the game. I'm sorry about that. Um, but yes, I am here playing it, of course. You can tell because of my... Um, up here, the ping. It doesn't say recorded or anything. This is literally like live, you know? Like I can move my mouse and stuff. And I can shake my camera and stuff. So, like, you know. It is definitely live commentary. But the issue is I forgot... To click the record button for the first five minutes of the game. So, unfortunate for me, I'm gonna have to re-record that. I hope I sync it up pretty well. I should. Apologies for that in advance, I guess. I'm sorry, uh, viewers. 
Let's get some shimmer damage here. Oh yeah it has, my friends. I can't shoot it anymore because of the island's so high. The Vermont's coming this way, which is going to be really good for us, of course, long run. We're going to get a lot of turbo damage on this Pommer right now, too. We're going to torp like this, he probably has Hydro running. Thunder will spot the Pommer, so we're chilling. The issue is if he has Hydro, which he does. As long as he doesn't turn into us, we should be safe from him. Our smoke shooting range is... No way, it's 4.9. 4.9?! Since when was it 4.9? Minotaur? What? I thought it was like 5.6, holy base. Alright, he's gonna turn into those torps and take three. Maybe two, actually. Maybe zero. Who the fuck knows? Hydro, of course, as expected. We're gonna hope our Thunder smashes the Pommer after I torp him. Only two. Okay, good. Two. I was gonna think only one there, but I was really worried. We're gonna just chill out for a second here. We're trying gonna try not die. Zhao is able to shoot us. The Pommer is double perma flooding. We're gonna keep our Hydro on. Keep the Pommer spotted. Hopefully our team can finish him off. And then we're going to reverse back into the B cap, maybe, potentially. And uh, fight the Venezia in front of his face. It's going to be a bit hard, but we should be able to, actually. He's not even in the cap yet. Oh, it's 4.9 because the Cyclone is on us. Normally it's 5.4. I know it. I'm, I'm like, it can't be 4.9. That's way too little. Let's try not die to the Venezia when we do this. We're not spotted by him yet. We will be in a sec here. If he has AP loaded, I'm dead. He has sap loaded, so we're chilling. Remember, sap can't set at the loss. Plus, AP can set at the loss, obviously. Spotted by what? Zhao? But it's not the Zhao shooting me. I have two on me right now, but it's not the Zhao. I have three on me, and that's the Zhao. We could always smoke up and start reversing into the Venice again. Could always be a play. Uh, RPF is up here. What? That's closer than the Venezia to me. Oh yeah, he's really close. He's spotting me. Torpedoes are stern. Z52. What is that? Yeah, it has to be Z52. Torpedoes are stern. He's gonna smoke and wait for him to hydro me. We got one shot by the Venezia sap, but it's okay. It's, we're not dead. We're not dead. We're not dead. We're not dead. We're gonna reverse. We're gonna try it. Torp this. Smoke screen set. He's not in the cap yet. I'm hydro. He okay. I'm dead. <laughs> GG. All right, we'll go next now. Six cam hydro. Can I live? If I run fast enough before the van reloads. No, incoming. Whatever it is, so Venetia reloads before I get behind this island. Guaranteed. Wait, he's there. He's there. Wait, can I hide from him? No, I can't. He shot someone else, he shot someone else, he shot someone else! Come on, come on, come on, I can live, I can live, I can live. Oh, I'm so lucky. Alright, the heal. The Z52 is molding, he's like, ah, I drove the guy and you don't shoot him! How dare you! <laughs> How dare you! To port. You know? Oh my god. Like, I clicked my hydro Torpedoes button, energy. man, and you were supposed to kill it, man, and you didn't kill him, man. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? You know? We're actually gonna sit back here, so when the Venezia comes around the corner, we just torp him. We have to reverse for it again. Victory is in sight. Oh, yeah, it is. Venezia is suiciding right now. Maybe. Actually, I think he makes it around the corner. Let's hope he does, so I can actually get a shot on him here, maybe one or two. He's gonna turn into the Ohio, so he's gonna be angled to me. Gonna reverse for it. We already have converted, that's pretty good. Um, let's reverse, of course. I wonder who he's aiming at. I hope it's not me. It's not me yet. Oh, it is me. Look, his guns, his guns, they're turning towards me. Yeah. I, I'm the chosen one. The Z52 is here too. Hello. Double strike. Come on, come on, come on. Before he kills me. Come on. Yes, let's go. Alright. Double strike. 
If we had Andrew Cunningham, we'd get an extra Hydro, extra Heal, extra Smoke, but we don't need it because we have one of each. There you go. GG. That's first game. I'm gonna skip to the end so we don't have to wait for the Zao, guys. Alright. So... Let's check the score. So we ended up getting, of course, 164,000 damage, Confederate, Double Strike, Dreadnought, 2 kills, 2 Torpids, 356 Shell Hits, a Flood, and 3 Defended Ribbons. In terms of team score, we ended up getting 2.1k base XP, of course. Um, in terms of detailed report, we got um, 22k on the Van, 3k on the Zed, those are the ships we killed. 55k on the Pomeran, 33k on the Satsuma, 31k on the Ohio, 10k on the Groningen, and 6k on the Shema, and then 300 HP on the Zal. Damage received, 72,000. We probably would have received more if we didn't take so much sap and, and torpedoes, of course. Um, but um, in terms of the damage caused, all AP, of course, and some torps. It's Minotaur. <laughs> in terms of credits XP, we got 439,000 credits, 9k XP, 1.9k free XP, and 11,000 commander XP. Let's go into our second game in Minotaur here. Alright, so, game two, here on Haven, we're go- oh, we spawn north, standard battle, mm. so, so standard battle to win, you either don't let them cap your home cap, or you just out damage them and win via damage, so, so we're gonna be okay, I so I'm gonna skip the starting bit, so I don't have to, you know, may, we're just gonna go up here, we're gonna go up to like E, E8, or E9, maybe actually E10, actually, uh, F8 and F9 just to be at a safe distance, to be honest. Actually, I can just keep it. I don't think I have to skip this entire thing. But So here we are. Um, let's just talk about the lineups, obviously. So we have Montana, Line, Izumo, North Carolina, Bismarck, Napoli, Yoshino, Rune, Eregolo, Haaland, Kitakazi, and Akizuki. Um, so really and truly not really too stressful DDs. The stressful one is, I guess, the Haaland and the Kita. The rest are okay. Um, in terms of the cruisers, Yoshino is scary because he can overmatch me, even Napoli can overmatch me. And battleships, I mean the Montana's the tier 10 one, right? So, I mean, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, I want to get on the rock, actually, but the issue with getting on the rock is, if they win the flank, you're dead instantly. I don't want to just kill myself and say, hey, I'm gonna go on the rock no matter what happens, because it's risky. You know, you get on the rock, you lose the flank, boom, done. Um, maybe if our Hargumo does come up north, then we can be fine. Also, we can't leave the mid open. If we leave the mid open, they can just walk into our home cap, you know. But actually, this map is pretty easy to get to the back to the home cap, so we can actually defend it pretty easily. We're gonna turn out right now, or else we're gonna die. Um, RPF is mid. We're gonna ping it for our Akizuki to know. Um, we're gonna turn out, of course. We don't want to be bow in against all these ships. The ship I don't want to farm right this match is the Izumo because he has minimal superstructure. It's going to be pretty hard to damage, of course. And um, we do have Hydro available. Should we use it right now? We haven't been spotted. Why would he torp in this general direction? Maybe our Adriatico is RPF'd, maybe. That's why he would be torping in this general direction, I would assume. Let's see what our Adriatico is going to see. He sees the entire squad. We're going to smoke up. It is the Rune Ismo Division up north. Bismarck is coming also, which is really good for us, actually. We're going to try smoke up here, farm the Rune a bit. We're gonna also Hydro, just in case there's Torps coming, because we are gonna smoke up. And since we're smoking up, Destroyers love Torping Smoke Screens. Why do they love Torping Smoke Screens? This is obviously because most ship people stay stationary in Smoke Screens, including me, like, for example, in the first game I showed. That's why this out torp my Smoke Screen. I sat there and ate two torps, so we're gonna try play them a bit more smartly this time. We're gonna reverse, have the hydro enabled. I'm gonna keep shooting this rune, even though we're not gonna get any more damage on him, to be honest. Turn it on and off again. Make sure it's off, so we don't get turbo spammed. We're gonna start farming this all slowly, slowly. The thing with Minotaur is, the the later game you're alive, the better it is, honestly. Cause, well not really, but for damage output, but you can output a lot of damage even in the late game. 
which can really be a game changer for your team. Look, for example, we left the mid open here, as I said in the start, and guess what's coming down mid? An Akitakazi. But the nice thing about it... Wait, look where Arzuma is! But he's actually killing the Regolo. Guys, look what... Our Azuma is suiciding, but it's gonna work out. What? How? Look where he is! He's down here, look, he's in an aggressive position. He's killing the DD though. I mean, it's a really bad play, but then again, I mean, he did kill a destroyer. Let us go mid and deal with the Kitakazi maybe, and then push up towards in the middle. We're gonna get crossfires on these guys once they get pushed out by my team. We're gonna have to try, I think, 17 steps in advance, of course. Let us do that. So let's start moving towards the mid. Maybe fight the Kitakazi. And then if we could fight the Kitakazi, we could end up uh, coming back north and cross-firing the Lion, Izumo, Bismarck, Rune and getting turbo damage in return. Actually, the Kitakazi is coming back up here. We're going to ping that. It's RPF. He's probably going to torp my team as they're going in, which is really bad for my team, actually, because my FDG is already low and killable. Oh, but the lion just got dev struck. Showing too much broadside, I guess. Um, he might actually go down. That's the thing with lion against the new Duncan. Lion has really bad firing angles, especially kited. So you're gonna have to show Citadel to actually get those guns off. Whilst the Duncan, I don't think it has to actually. I mean, you do get overmatch through your nose, for example, but. I think you can actually angle your citadel pretty well in the Duncan. Even kite it away, even though all the guns are up front. So let's keep going this way. We have no hydro, so this is a really relatively risky play. Wait, Bismarck's turning back. Should we go back actually? Um I'll think about it. Let's just stay close to this island so we don't like overdose. There's the Kitakazi, we know where he is. We don't have to panic and pretend we don't know where he is anymore. Well we have RPF obviously, so we knew where he was, but not exactly obviously. Let's just open up a bit. Lion can shoot me, by the way. He didn't shoot me, though. We're actually gonna push up here, honestly. Um, I was gonna go back, but the Bismarck actually turned back towards us, which is I mean, pretty good for me, obviously. I'm gonna get to shoot it. Can shoot the lion now. Iowa died. It is sad, but it is what it is. Happens. They did put overly, like, push up into their team who's pre kited and ready for them, so. Permatorp 2 on Holland, that's gonna be really good for us late game. If we can kill him, that will be really, really good for us late game, because he won't even be in the game late game. There you go. I don't know why he said broadside to me, that was. Really interesting, to be honest. We're gonna Hydro here. We're gonna see if we can spot that Kitakazi on the rock, potentially. No, he did leave. He's like... Yeah, he's over here now. We're gonna smoke up right here and hope our team is spotting for us. Harugmo is definitely spotting. North Carolina can shoot me. But we can do some damage here to the Bismarck. Hopefully without dying, we're gonna reverse and get out of here, of course. Adriatico is playing overly aggressive. Not sure if that's going to be a good play on the Kita. The Kita is relatively low. I mean, he's 8k HP. But Adriatico is 9k. So he's not too healthy over the Kitakazi. But I think he's screening for us very well there. So I'm going to actually end up complimenting him soon. I just want to get some damage here. I want to reload so quick. I don't want to lose like 17 salvos. Okay, actually he's not screening us anymore. Feels bad, man. This is all blind fire, by the way, because we're not spotted, as you can see. We're okay. Enemy cruiser detected. Enemy cruiser detected. I think the Kitakazi is either coming for me. No, no, he's going for the Harugumo. I can't shoot it. I can't shoot it. The island's in the way. Let's try help the Harugumo by shooting the rune, because the rune is the one that's going to be focusing him hard. It's the one that has the quickest reload. So if we, and he's the least tanky one, so we can actually do some damage to him. Uh, maybe not, he went dark instantly. And Harugus, I think Harugus was just went safe. We might just have to run away here, because if we get spotted after my smoke is done, we're going to end up dying. Two Torpids on the rune, three Dev Strike, nice, that's a good. 
dev strike there with the torpedoes. It's important to use the torpedoes as well as the guns on Minotaur, of course. We're still full HP and we have 130,000 damage. This is why the smoke screen is really nice to use, guys. And it's not just the radar which can kill destroyers. Look at their Holland, for example. I don't know what he was thinking, to be honest. But the smoke Minotaur is also really good for killing destroyers because it still has the same guns. The only thing you don't have is the spotting capabilities unless, you know, the DD does open up on you. Napoli actually shot me slowing down apparently, so if we can speed up and dodge the salvo. Yeah, like that, that's fine. Oh, but Ismo shot me. Uh, we're okay. Will North Carolina shoot me too? No. We can actually go dark here, we're gonna turn in. Oh, Bismarck shot me, do I die? Every salvo in Minotaur is a do I die situation. No, not this time. Oh! Almost. Let's turn in, get closer, get some more damage. Um, so we have smoke available here. This is good, this is good. We can also contest the cap with our smoke screen. They have no radar. I would open up right now, but I want them to shoot once. I, I really and truly I want the Izumo to shoot, because that's the scariest one on their team for me. It's the thing I can't really damage as much as the rest, and it's the thing that actually punishes me, because the shells are the fastest on the Izumo. North Carolina can obviously punish me too, it overmatches me everywhere, but the shells aren't as fast as Izumo shells, so he's, he's gonna, it's, it's easier for us to basically dodge the shells from a North Carolina than an Izumo. Try output as much damage as we can here. Get in the smoke, hopefully he doesn't kill us. Napoli shot us, but that's okay, I think. Yeah, it's okay. He hit my belt. Armor. Let's output as much damage as we can on this Izumo. And maybe the North Carolina, because the Izumo is really hard to damage. We have, we have Hydro now. We're going to need to use it for the Napoli Torps. North Carolina died instantly. Our team has taken the lead. Indeed it has. We're gonna torp like this, because the Napoli is running at our DDs. Okay, he's actually not going that way, it's turned out. Let me just him a bit. I think my DDs are actually safe, they're in smokes. Okay, let's go for the Montana because he's the one broadside. You have to just keep shooting the broadside targets, man. Or if they're super low HP. If they're like relatively healthy and angled, don't shoot them, man, in Minotaur. Just output as much damage as you can. That's kind of your goal. Obviously, you need pure broadsides if possible. That's where you're going to output the most damage. Uh, Montana's actually getting smoked by his teammate there. What is that? Kitaka Kitakazi. Wait, that's the same Kitakazi from before. Holy, he's still alive. Giga Chan. Harugumo torps out the Izumo. The game's pretty much over at this point. We're just trying to secure some extra damage. Getting the high caliber there. Got the Confederate and a Dev Strike. This is a pretty nice game actually overall. If we can kill the Montana, that would be really nice, but I don't think we are. Because Oh we did? That's nice. Um let us go for the Napoli here. Um Get it at some point. Well, not us, but our team can. Oh, he died. Alright, GG. Both of them died, even Keita. Alright, there you go. That's our second game in Minotaur. So. We got. Let me go back to port and show you. We got. We got 195,000 damage, 474 shell hits, 3 torpedoes, 3 incaps, 3 kills, 2 floods, and a spotted ribbon. We got devastating strike, confederate, and high caliber. In terms of team score, we ended up getting 2.4k base XP, 3 kills. We got, of course, the, the devastating strike, confederate, and high caliber. We're going to be complementing our Harugumo too, because he seemed to have played well. In terms of detailed report, we got 51k on the rune, thanks to the 3 torpedoes and some AP shells, 16k on the Montana, 14k on the Holland, 41k on the Izumo, 
27k on the Bismarck, 19k on the Lion, 9k on the Napoli, 9k on the Nordcal, and 5k on the Kitakaze. We only took 17,000 damage ourselves, that's why you want to be playing the Smoke Minotaur for damage. Um, in terms of our damage output, it's all AP and Torps like last game, as you can see. No flooding damage this time though, well 100 instead of 10,000. We got a total of yeah 195,000 credits and XP, we got 615,000 credits, 10.4k XP, 2.2k free XP and 12.9k commander XP. In terms of my commander build for the Minotaur, we have last stand, incoming fire alert, priority target, superintendent, survivability expert, concealment expert, adrenaline rush and radio location. In terms of my equipment, I have uh, main battery mod 3, concealment system mod 1, steering gears mod 1, aiming system mod 1, and hydro search mod 1, and main armaments mod 1. Let me remove this red news thing, because it might be bugging some of you guys too. There you go. So in terms of the Minotaur, um, there, there you go, there's the video. Um, Oh yeah, statistics before we do a summary of the ship. My stats are going to be really bad, guys. Let me explain why. It is my first tier 10 cruiser. My first tier 10 ever was Montana, but Minotaur was my first tier 10 cruiser. So my stats are really bad in it. But of course, they are getting better and better over time. We pulled our average from like 80,000 to 88,000 in this month alone. And we played it like 30 times. So yes, our average damage is going up. But, um, and our win rate is also going up. But um, in terms of the stats, they're really bad. 58%, um, 88k average, of course. I mean, these are really bad stats, guys. I mean, you can see, for example, my Marceau, it has 121 average, 76% win rate. Or really anything, you know. I mean, my stats are obviously significantly better in pretty much anything you look at, even Plymouth, for example. But, um, but for Minotaur, that's what I have. It is what it is. It's my first tier 10. There you go, 88k average, 58% win rate. Um, but yeah, um, I'm sorry about the stats in the Minotaur at least. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this Minotaur video. I hope you enjoyed this Minotaur video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, is the Minotaur a good ship? It's a great ship, it's really good, of course. Um, do I recommend it? Of course, it's pretty good. If you like the light cruiser playstyle, it has smoke. If you guys want to see a video on the Rigdar Minotaur, do let me know in the comments below. Um, in a nice way, not Malta, imagine not playing Radar Minotaur moment. Like, just ask nicely and we'll play a Radar Minotaur how I play as well. But yes, there you go. That is the Smoke Minotaur how I play. Um, um, this is the first reintroduction of this series, of course. We haven't done a how I play in two months, I think. Um, but due to my exams, but my exams are over, as I said, so I can actually do this more often. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Big fan.